First things first, Amir, how are you? I'm good, man. How about yourself? I'm all right, thank okay, you. Okay. So what I want to start with um, is the beginning. Do you remember the first album you ever bought? The first album I ever bought, Midnight Marauders by Tribe Called Quest. Okay. It'd be the first album I ever bought. Why this particular album? When I look back at it, when I first bought it, I thought it was a cool record. Mm -hmm. It had electric relaxation. I had bought the single. I played it so much. I broke it and I bought the album. And I loved it and I played it so much and I lost it and then one copy was stolen and one copy I left mm -hmm. it at friends and I kept buying it over and over. And I just loved the record. As I got older and understood, I had the ability to articulate why I, under, why I loved the record. Mm -hmm. That was the first record made for someone like me, an mm -hmm. African American from the suburbs. Right. Uh, not someone from the inner city, uh, an African-American whose family had come from the inner city and, and come from poverty, mm -hmm. but had ascended to something else. And it was a music that reflected that. Right. Uh, and I understood why I gravitated towards that record as I got older. Because I, I read this about you, that you felt less of a connection to, to the gangster rap, so to say, that, that was coming out at that time, but more you were more interested in, in the lyrical um, Sure. I felt less of a connection to it um, outside of it being sheer entertainment. Right. I, I, I loved it. I appreciated it. I would listen to okay. those records as well. I listened to all different subgenres of hip hop and rap music. Okay. But certain music resonated with me more based mm. on my own experiences. And I have a very different perspective on life growing up as my mother coming from one of the worst neighborhoods in Washington, D.C., and my father coming from a developing country from the Sudan. Sure. I saw life and death at such a rapid rate as a mm -hmm. child, from child soldiers in civil war to drug-infested neighborhoods that were constantly being just torn apart by violence, mm -hmm. that I lost the ability to glorify violence, Fair. Yeah. To, to entertain it, you know, to see it for anything else other than what it is. So. Yeah, I, it, that set me on a different path of what I appreciated and why I appreciate music. When did you yourself start to put words onto paper? I started putting music together at a very young age. I, my neighbor was the bass player of Parliament and Funkadelic. His name is uh, Gary Scheider. Okay. Mr. Scheider had two sons, Marshall and Garrett, who I grew up with. Mm -hmm. And we would always just mess around in their father's studio. He had a full analog studio in the basement of his house. And I didn't really take music serious at this point, but we were constantly around analog equipment. And I didn't know how important that was to me and how that was seeping into my subconscious as I started to make music in my last year of high school mm -hmm. when I discovered sampling and hip-hop production. I was rapping in high school. Friends told me I was good at it. I went to record with some mutual friends of friends who said, you know, you should give it a try. And I became fascinated by hip-hop production. A good friend of mine named Sean Bourne taught me how to make beats. And I never look back from there. What, this, this might sound strange, but what did you get out of making music or, or putting your thoughts onto paper? What, what did you get out of it? Uh, I come from a background of graphic design and okay. art illustration. I was an illustrator all of my childhood. Okay. And I wanted to go to Philadelphia School of Art. Mm. And I got accepted, but I didn't get a scholarship. At the last year of high school, I discovered hip hop production. and. It consumed me. It was a medium that I expressed myself in. It, it was so vivid and strong. It gave me a higher feeling than any other medium that I'd ever tried to express myself in. And it was something that I just couldn't get enough of. And I told my father I no longer wanted to go to Philly Art. I wanted to stay and do music. And he thought I was crazy, and here we are. <laughs> so, so, so now, a couple of years on, how does he feel about your music now? He's, he's very pleased. Okay. You know, my father is a... Uh, it was an interesting guy, you know, he, he comes from the Sudan, he came to America to make a better life for me and my family, mm -hmm. and he loves music, you know, he knows nothing about rap music, and he doesn't care, right. and he asked me how's life when we talk, he asked me how's business, he doesn't ask me about my music, my father's never heard a single song I've done. Okay, you know? to, to this day? To this day, okay. and we're, I'm fine with that, he doesn't, if I wasn't doing rap, he wouldn't listen to rap, so for him to listen to it because I do it would only be to gratify me. Sure. And he and I have a stronger relationship where I don't need that type of gratification, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, well, like you say, your father's from Sudan. 
and, and the music you make now is uh, very eclectic. So, so was was that part of of, of your musical upbringing as well to, to, to have music f from everywhere be in your? So many things that have made me what I am, and I'm I'm not anything special. I think every human being, from the moment they their memory starts to record and they're conscious of themselves, uh, things seep into them subconsciously mm -hmm. that set them on a course of who they'll be as a person. I'm no exception to that. My father's from the stem, my mother's from Washington, D.C. My grandparents from my mother's side are from the rural countryside of Maryland. My father's side came from a tribal area into the city. And everything that they experienced and went through is now in me. Mm -hmm. The oud that my father plays, the double, the double strings, big belly guitar. Mm -hmm. My grandmother on my mother's side sings, plays guitar and keys and piano and organ in church. Her brother is a country singer. My mother is a singer. Her sister is, all, she's my mother's the oldest of 11 children. Okay. All of them can sing and they harmonize together at family gatherings. I just was around tons of music from parts of different parts of the world and not, mm -hmm. just different things in general. And then for, for you, because we're here at, the, at a jazz festival, what does jazz mean to you? Jazz means so much to me. Jazz is the root. Jazz is the reason I have a career. If it wasn't for what was born through my ancestors in the Deep South and them taking circumstance and oppression and turning it into beauty, we wouldn't have rap. Rap was born under the same circumstances. Oppression and struggle created rap. Oppression and struggle created jazz. It's our constant narrative. We are all, African Americans are a people who are of oral tradition and of a musical tradition more so than anyone I know. And jazz is the beginning, the first page in that story of our experience through music. It tells our entire history as it constantly evolves. Jazz is in my music. If it wasn't for jazz, obviously this is redundant. There would be no rock and roll. There would be no rap. There were so many genres that were born from America would not exist without jazz. Jazz is everything. And it's interesting because you, you mentioned the, the struggle, that the, the struggle is part of it. And there, there's one song on your, uh, I, think, I think it's your most, most recent EP, mm. uh, Alwasta, I, I don't know. Alwasta. Alwasta. Lifting Shadows. Mm. So wh where did that song start for you? Lifting Shadows started on a tour bus through Europe last winter when we crossed from Britain into, from Dover into Calais. And I went past the refugee camps of migrants making their way through Europe. From there, I performed in Bavaria in Munich where migrants who had made the trek all the way to Munich and were received with open arms were invited to come to my show. And I spoke to eight to 12 year old children who had made the trek alone and survived their mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers and watched them die. And I, it made me remind myself that my father escaped the war and that it resonated with me in such a way that it needed to be reflected. I'm African American and I'm Sudanese. I'm black, I'm Muslim, I'm Arab. I'm hated by so many people for so many things and it needed to be reflected in a song. And then that must be difficult, the, the state that America is in now, the, the shootings of the last couple of days, Donald Trump, the rise of Donald Trump. So um, how does music help you in this? The, 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 does, it, does, it, does it help writing about it? And Art has always been a way of me releasing my emotions mm -hmm. in any medium. It's always been that way for me. Music is definitely the way that I choose to speak to people. You know, I feel like music is a very effective tool in getting messages across without pointing fingers at people per se. There's something about dictation over melody that makes it easier to digest. And, and in that sense, because you've also, um, I think it's uh, the art tape, which is, which is instrumental. So, so is it for, important for you to have both sides of that, to, to have the, the lyrical, the thoughts? And definitely, the... definitely. Uh, it's different languages to communicate mm -hmm. with different people. Some people receive information through vocals. Some people receive it through sheer instrumentals. Some people prefer both. So therefore you can have poetry and you can have instrumental music and you can have a combination of the two. If it's within my means and ability to do both, why not? And you've had a, a lot of releases in the, in the last couple of years. What are you working towards now? 
Uh, currently, I'm working on a solo album with vocals okay. at the moment. I'm very excited for it. There's a lot going on in the world that needs to be spoken about and, and a lot of things that need to be said. And I'm at a crucial point where I'm in a position to be able to say something and people will listen. I have to take advantage of that opportunity. It's my duty. Final question, what, what is the best reaction somebody had to your music that you've heard? I couldn't pick a particular reaction that's been the best to my music other than there's nothing better than people hearing my music for the first time and becoming fans overnight, almost instantly. From that one moment that they hear it, and I know that they tell me they search through my catalog and they discover more. And that moment where you really grab a fan, it never gets old. I'm forever appreciative of it. Thank you very much for your time. No worries, man. Thank, Thank you. you.